Hello friends, this video on P block elements part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's see the trends for P block specific. We'll talk about electronic configuration, atomic and ionic radius, ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy, electronegativity, metallic character, oxidation states. We'll discuss about all these things in detail. So let's start with the electronic configuration first. So if you see the electronic configuration, these are my uh, P block elements, right? My electronic configuration is NS2, NP126. That is my electronic configuration. For example, if you talk about boron, this becomes what? NS1, S1, 1S1, 31S2, 2S2, and 2P1. See, 2 plus 2, 4 plus 1, 5, 5. This is my electronic configuration. If you see, if you ignore this, the last part is what? Ns2, Nb1. Similarly, carbon, if you talk about, this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, 2, 4, 6, 6. Correct. So if you ignore this part, this is what? Ns2, Np2. It is following this part. Similarly, if you talk about the neon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we know this part, the electronic configuration is NS2 and B6. That is my typical electronic configuration for P block element. We talk about the atomic radius. Before that, let's again discuss the types of atomic radius. We have discussed this in class 11. So there is something called Van der Waal radius. So this is the radius of the imaginary hard sphere, which can be used to model the atom. It's the imaginary hard sphere. For example, these two atoms, and they're bonded by a weak Van der Waal force, right? There is, Actually, there is no uh, real bond. There is no chemical bond between them. There is just a strong force of attraction between these, right? This is just a weak force, you can say. Weak force of attraction. So thus, this radius is my Van der Waal radius. So you have to find the distance between two nucleus, divide by two, you get Van der Waal radius. But in this case, you see there is no bond as such, right? It's just a weak force of attraction between them. And thus, you get this whole thing as my Van der Waal radius. The next is the covalent radius. In, in this, if you see, they are a little more closer together, right? Because there's a bond here. This is a bond. There is a bond between them. Weak force, no bond. So in this case, there's a bond. These two nucleus comes together and this distance is my covalent radius. If you see, for the same uh, molecule, if you take, or same atom, if you take, you can find the Van der Waal radius, you can find the covalent radius, and these radius will differ, correct? And there is something called ionic radius also. So in case a compound uh, or in case an atom is not forming a covalent bond, is forming ionic bond, for example, NaCl, they, they don't have a, uh, there's no covalent bond in this, electron is actually transferred, right? So we form an ionic bond. So in this case, we talk about ionic radius. But again, in this case also, we have, we have a bond, right? We have an ionic bond between them, correct? So we have three kinds of radius. The Van der Waal radius, which is nothing but uh, radius of an imaginary hard sphere, right? It's all imaginary hard sphere, and there's no bond axis between them. They're just held by a weak force of attraction. Then we have my uh, bonded uh, radius, either covalent radius or ionic radius. So there's so many different kinds of radius, and these values differ. For example, in this case, my for a given, uh, atom, uh, if you see the Van der Waal radius is 1 ATP cometer, right? But if you talk about my, uh, this, this, this radius, 198, sorry, 99 picometer is my, yeah, 99 picometer is my uh, covalent radius or ionic radius and 1 ATP picometer is my Van der Waal radius. Why? Because you see, if you talk about the Van der Waal radius, I'm talking about just the, in these two uh, molecules, there's a force of attraction between these two. You see, there is no bond between uh, this unit and this unit, right? They're just a force of attraction, the Van der Waal force of attraction. And then you find the radius. But if you talk about the actual reaction, because here, if you see actual uh, bond formation has taken place, and then you find the radius, that becomes a covalent or ionic radius. So, if you see, if you talk about the covalent atomic radius for group of P block elements, this is how the trend is. If you go down the group, the atomic radius increase. If you go from left to right, the atomic radius decrease. Why? 
the nuclear charge increase right it's more and more charge more and more charge right more and more charge more and more charge in the uh, atom the nucleus actually has a more and more charge the more and more charge these charge will attract this electrons and the atom will change correct there's less charge so it will not attract the electrons so far um, so vigorously so the electrons will be in the outermost shell but in this case since it has more charge it is like this the nucleus is the head member of the family right and the nucleus attracts these electrons they'll come together same thing if the nucleus attracts all these electrons will come together and the size will shrink if the nucleus is careless it doesn't have much power all this electron will wander around they move from here to there right that's a similarity you can say so that's why if you go down also the nuclear charge increase in this case also but the number of electrons also increase right so the number of electrons this uh, nucleus has to handle is more even if the nucleus is more powerful if you talk about the num the power per electron if you talk about that because the number of uh, electrons have increased that will decrease correct it's about this this is one manager and handling of uh, one person and 10 managers uh, the manager is more powerful so it's it's all that it's all the capacity of this nucleus to attract and the number of electrons so based on these this is the trend so if you want you can again watch my previous videos where we discuss in these in more detail why we have this kind of trend if you see boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine if you go from left to right the size is increasing 82 77 75 73 71 69 the value is decreasing if you go down 82 118 126 114 148 in this case also it is increasing these values are in picometer right and then uh, the concept of atomic radius come you must have seen this uh, term why i'm uh, discussing these again is a lot of students get confused between the bond wall radius, covalent radius, ion radius and atomic radius. See atomic radius is an empirical uh, value, it's experimental value. So what happened is this guy J.C. Slater in 1864, what he did was he did a careful comparison between the bond length of over 12,000 bond types in ionic, metallic and covalent crystals. For example, if we talk about the hydrogen itself, right? So hydrogen sometimes form bond with carbon. So sometimes hydrogen form bond with oxygen. Sometimes hydrogen form with nitrogen, right? So these bonds, or sometimes you have only hydrogen. So these bond lengths for hydrogen in all these cases will differ, right? When you talk about the bond length, yes, because the bond length again will de depends on the uh, amount of attraction between the carbon hydrogen or the hydrogen oxygen or nitrogen hydrogen or if you talk about the phosphine phosphorus hydrogen so what this guy did was he did an experimental uh, uh, study i mean he did he noted down all the bond length and he found the average for, for hydrogen for most of the he found the average what is the average average you add these 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 and take more and find the van der Waal radius, covalent, ionic. He found everything for hydrogen and just found the average. Same thing he did for other, other elements also. So he found the average of the bond length, right? Because if you see the same hydrogen, it depends on this ionic, metallic, covalent, the value is different. This is more of empirical data. And he uh, made a chart for that, right? For all the elements he found the bond length and that length is used as a atomic radius because that is more uh, true value in the sense that it covers all the different type of hydrogen bonds or different type of oxygen bonds or, or uh, carbon bonds right so that's more of a um, experimental data correct thank you visit examfia.com to watch more videos Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.